Now to understand the different type of advertisement, we need to understand first of all the router types that we have in OSPF. The router which is completely inside uh, area, it's an internal router. The router which is sharing or when a router is shared between area 0 and non-backbone area, when a, when a router is shared between backbone and non-backbone area, we call it the, that is ABR, area border router. And when a router is used to redistribute routes from external source into OSPF, we call it as autonomous system border router, ASBR. Right. So we got ASBR, we got ABR, and we got internal router. And we also have an internal router, but at the same time, it is also a backbone router. This is an internal router as well as a backbone router. So why do we need to know these things? Um, because using this locations like ABR, ASBR, backbone router, we are going to have some uh, advertisement types. That's why we need to know. There's five advertisements starting with Router LSA, Network LSA, Summary LSA, Autonomous System External LSA. There's five LSAs. See, Type 3 and 4 has got same name. All these five LSAs, Link State Advertisements, carry different information. And they originate from different location. That's why we learned different locations in OSPF. We got internal router, that's that's one part of the OSPF location. ASBR, that is another location of this autonomous system, OSPF, autonomous system. ABR is another location. Backbone router is another location. So, we got different type of link state advertisements, LSAs. They all are having their own location from where they originate. All don't originate on every router. Now, let's begin with the first one, router LSA or LSA type 1. Router LSA is, as the word says, router. This LSA originates from every router. An ABR, an ASBR, internal, a backbone. This particular advertisement originates from every router. That's why the name is Router LSA. What does this carry? This carries the networks on the link, the mask on the link. That's what prefix means. Prefix network and mask on the link. Router ID from where this is originating means every router has got its own unique name. So when this advertisement originates, it originates with a router ID. And this advertisement goes only to those routers that are in same area. We got multiple areas in order to reduce the flooding of LSAs 
to reduce the amount of process utilization due to repeated flooding of LSAs. To minimize the size of the routing table, to localize the impact of topology changes, we have multiple areas. Now you see, though this LSA type 1 router LSA originates from every single router, they are not advertised to neighbor area. It is advertised only to those routers, those neighbors which are within the same area. That's the scope of this type. Next comes the network LSA. See, in a LAN environment, for every network, we will have one designated router. And it is the designated router which is going to distribute the DR designated other router's information. So there is need for a special advertisement type. That's why it is given as a type 2 network, let's say special advertisement type. Because it comes only from designated routers. DR. Type 1 originates from every router. Type 2 originates only from designated router. Both carries the prefix information but this is from DR to others. That is from every router to all other router including DR. So, if you do not have an Ethernet segment, you will never see Type 2 LSA. Why? Because there won't be any DR, BDR. If no DR, BDR, no Type 2 LSA. It is not mandatory to see all type of LSA on every router. You will see type 1 and type 3 in all routers, but not other LSAs guaranteed. Now, type 1 originates from every router, type 2 originates from designated router. Both scope is within the area. Both LSAs or local to the area. They don't advertise to next area. So there is no chance for other area to learn about this area using this type 1 and type 2. There is need for another LSA. That is what type 3 LSA. Type 3 LSA is the one which is going to carry this area routes to that next area. Without Type 3, there is no possibility for next area to know about this area. It's Type 3 LSA. And this LSA originates from the ABR only. If you see, Type 1 and Type 2 are distributed among all the routers inside this boundary, including this router. So what this router will, will do, it will take the Type 1 and Type 2, convert it into Type 3 and send it out as Type 3 to the other areas. Repeating again. The networks of router, uh, the networks of area one, are advertised and distributed as type one and type two, but the distribution is local to that area. 
to take this advertisement to next area for the next area to know about the networks of this area we need type 3 you may think like why you do this why not let type 1 go as type 1 to the other area type 2 go as type 2 to other area why are you converting it into type 3 and sending it to other area maybe our question answer to that is your DR and all not necessary for other area to know so that variation type 1 type 2 variation is not necessary for another area members so we need a consolidated advertisement that's one reason another reason <coughs> We may not like to send detailed subnets. We may not like to send all the type 1 routes given. We want to summarize and send it to next area. So when you do summarization, type 1 is summarized and sent to another area as type 3. So type 3 LSA and type 1 LSA will never be same because type 1 is a detailed LSA, type 3 is a summary LSA. Where do we do summarization? Whenever we want to do summarization, there is there is only one place allocated reserved for summarization and which is called as ABR, area border route. <coughs> Only this router, we do summarization for this entire area 1. Likewise, for entire area 2, we do summarization here and summary route will be sent to the backbone. So it is only the ABR on which we do summarization. And this type 3 also originates from that same ABR. Type 3 also originates from the same ABR. That is why, that is why the name is given as summary LSA. It is originating from the place where you may do summarization. Where you do summarization? On ABR. Because this LSA originates from that router. <laughs> The name is given as summary LSA. Now there is another type called 4 with the same name. Same reason because the type 4 LSA also originates from the same ABR only but the information that it is going to carry is different thing. What does type 4 carry? Type 4 carries only this ASBR's router ID. What is ASBR? ASBR is a router where we take the external routes and redistribute inside OSPF. That redistribution point is what called as ASBR router <coughs> in OSPF. And now this router will have a router ID. Let's say 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. So about this 1.1.1.1 as the external source as the ASBR, this ABR and this ABR will tell that we got 1.1.1.1 as ASBR. So that every router in every area will know which router is doing the redistribution. So every router will know if they want to go to internet. Let's assume this cloud as an internet. Every area routers will know that I need to go to this router in order to go to internet. So the router's ID only the router's ID is advertised by this router 
and this router whose router id this router's router id who advertises abr advertises what is abr the summarization point <coughs> Here is the summarization point. That's why again this type four LSE is also called as summary LSE. Do they carry any external network information? No. They carry only the router ID of the router, which is responsible for bringing the external network inside. <coughs> Now, this both originates from ABR, which we just saw. This originates from the designated router only. This originates from every single router. From where this originates? This originates from the ASBR itself. What does it carry? It carries the external route inside this. OSPF domain. External routes, it can be internet routes, it can be another autonomous system routes, it may be from another OSPF or another EIGRP or RIP. <coughs> so, Type 5 LSA is the one which is responsible for bringing the external route inside. Type 5 LSA name is given as Autonomous System External LSA. Autonomous System External LSA. Type 5 is Autonomous System External LSA. Type 4 is Autonomous System Summary LSA. Type 3 is a simply a summary LSA. Type 3, you don't, uh, type 3 you can call it a summary LSA, but actually type 4 has got another um, full name. The full name of type 4 is Autonomous system summary LSA. It's not simply summary LSA, but they want to teach us that they both originate from same place, so it's got it has got the same name summary LSA. Now these five types of LSA we are going to see now in our demo. If you have any question, you may ask. We're going to just configure this three and see there will be a DR and BDR. Why? Because I got Ethernet links and I'm connecting through a switch. So definitely there is going to be a DR and BDR. And I'm going to put all these three routers in the same area. So you will not see type 3 LSA. Nor 4 and 5. We will see only type 1 and type 2. look nice I just put it like this hmm. To configure IP addresses, let's get into the mode. Interface loopback zero IP address one 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 one. The IP address on this interface G zero zero will be ten dot one two three dot zero dot one. I've written 24 masks, so I'll say 25, 255, 255, 255, 0. Let us go to the next router and finish the IP address configuration.
That's it. So we got the IP addresses configured. Next thing, let us enable OSPF. Uh, you can do enable uh, enabling OSPF in two different ways. One like this: router OSPF process ID network three network wildcard mask area zero. Another way, another way is network sorry let's finish the other network 110 so what does this mean this means that if any network any interface on this router having the first octet only see i put zero only on the first octet having first octet only as three if you find some interface, one interface or many interface beginning with 3 in the first octet IP address, then put that interface in area 0 under OSPF process 1. Likewise, if you find any IP address on interface beginning with 10 in the first octet area 0, put it in OSPF right okay so why always area 0 let's make it as area 1 I'll remove this how do you remove if I don't want this just go back up one step up up arrow and go to the beginning of the line and put no and cancel it I just cancel the both the configuration now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two in area 1 Then this route, this route, this group of router is going to be in area one. So let me write down here area one. So we have finished configuring router three. Let me configure router two using interface level commands like this. Actually, I recommend you to go with this interface commands. It's easy to um, configure. Order order one interface loopback zero IP OSPF one area zero. Expecting two neighbors now. Router one should find two neighbors now. I'm just checking whether the interface is up. It is up. So shortly I should see neighbor. Let me go to router 2 and check whether the neighbor is formed. Mm. There is something mismatch in area ID. I think I accidentally put area 0. Show run interface loopback 0. Oh, I put area 1. What happened then? Maybe on router 1. But let us read the. Uh, it says router 1 only has got some issue. Show run interface loopback. I put area 0, which is not correct. You should put area 1. Only then neighborship will come up. Likewise, interface G00. Right. 
So we should be getting neighbor in time to come up. So we got OSPF two neighbors, as I said earlier. Router one has got two neighbor, which is two 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 and three 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 three. Now we will definitely have one designated router because it's a LAN segment. See, show IP OSPF neighbor. It shows the designated router is router three. The backup designated router is router 2. Now I want to show you the LSA types. To see LSA types, you need to type show IP OSPF database. Show IP OSPF database. Let's try. Show IP OSPF database. You see, you are now seeing router LSA. This is a mistake. Don't worry about this. This will go away in some time. Area zero. We want only area one. So in area one, we got three routers: router one, router two, and router three. See. The advertisement coming from every router is a router LSA. So this is also a nice command to troubleshoot. I should see all three routers. I am seeing it, which means everything is going good. The next type of LSA is network LSA. Network LSA will be advertised only by the DR. Whose, I, whose router ID is that? The DR's router ID. You see, show IP OSPF neighbor. Who is the DR? Three, 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 three. So when you say show IP OSPF database, and if you see under net LSA, net LSA is nothing but network LSA, type 2 LSA. If you will see 33333, then he is the DR. You no need to go and check there. It is already known. By seeing this, you can know it. Alright. So far, we have covered two types of LSA. Router LSA and network LSA. Let us enlarge our network. So as we have planned, we are going to assign IP address and then followed by OSPF. You know, I made a mistake. Uh, it's not a mistake. I don't know. It's a good, it's GNS mistake. Usually, when you connect serial interface, it will be shown like a lightning symbol Z Z. Serial wires are represented like this. If we draw like this, it's serial wire between two routers. So here it is straight, but don't mis misunderstand it as a Ethernet wire. It is still a serial wire. You can see S there. S. Serial. Now, Let's begin from router 3. I think router 3 is configured partially. We need to configure only the area 0 side. Only the area 0 side we need to configure. This side is already configured. We saw the output earlier. You see, router 3. Show IP OSP on neighbor. It has got two neighbors, router 1 and 2. Show IP, show IP OSPF neighbor. Sorry. Database. As of now, there is no type 3. Why? Because router 3 still don't know I am a border router. It don't know. Because we have not configured area 0 side of router 3. So if you type show IP OSPF now, please pay attention. If you type show IP OSPF, 
you don't see any sign of ABR. It says I am a member of area 1. It's not talking anything about area 0 or backbone. Nowhere. It says my router ID is this. Now let's go and configure the other side. Interface G1 slash 0. IP address 10.34.0.3. Two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot three. So it's zero. But there will be a problem. What problem? Earlier, please focus. Earlier, I said do um, show IP OS show IP show run section that begins with router BGP, router OSPF. Earlier I said anything that starts with 10 belong to area 1 but we do not want this to be in area 1. We want it to be in area 0. So should I need to change this? No, 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 no. Let it be like that. Now you need to go to that interface and say IP OSPF 1 area 0 so interface if you have an interface configuration that is given importance for those interface where we have not configured this this will be applicable for those interface that has got configuration this is going to be applicable whatever you put under the interface has got more weightage now let's verify Show IP OSPF interface brief. You can see that only this interface is area 0. This is the process ID which we use, no? 1. This is area 0, and all other two interfaces belong to area 1. Yep. Now you see show IP OSPF. This will say I'm an ABR see but ABR is backbone is inactive because the other side is not configured the other side is not configured have we configured R4 no now let us finish the other routers quickly for that I'll use notepad to make it faster What area? Area 0. This I am configuring for router 4. Our router 4 configurations are ready, all that I need to do is just paste. Next. Router 5 configuration. One slot zero is going to be fifty six. And fifty six ten or fifty six in area two. All right now what is next? That's it.
If you see the other side is serial 6 slash 0. So I'll cut this and say serial 6 slash 0. Area 2. Now let's put this on router 6. <coughs> The last router to be configured is router 7. That is all. Let's paste this on router 7. All right, now I'm expecting a ping between router 1 to router 7 shortly. I'm waiting for OSPF neighborship confirmation. Ah, I got the confirmation. Router 7 says I got a neighbor called 6.6.6.6. .6 .6 .6. If it is a neighbor, by this time it would have shared the LSDB and they would have got synchronized with the database. So if I ping, I must ping 11111 from here. That's it. I can ping from the right hand side end to the left hand side end. Now let us verify the LSDB. Focus. As I said earlier, between router 6 and 7 there won't be DR, BDR. Show IP OSPF neighbor. Do you see any DR or BDR mentioned? No. But if you check between 5 and 6, show IP OSPF neighbor. Between 5 and 6, you know, 5 is a DR. And on the serial link, the priority is zero. This is not process ID. Process ID, if you want to see, command is show IP OSPF interface brief. Process ID is same for all three. But serial is a point to point link. So there is no DRBDR. Priority is always zero for the serial link. Okay, now, if there is no DRBDR between router 6 and 7, let us go and check 7, the database. Show IP OSPF database. You see only one DR, which is router 5. I told you, net LSA originates from DR, and I showed you router 5 is a DR. Between router 6 and 7, there is no DR, that's why you don't see any mentioning about 6 or 7's router ID. Now, let's come from the beginning on the top. Look at this. You got a router LSA, which means this area 2 has got 3 routers, 5, 6 and 7. Is that right? Yeah, 5 is also part of area 2. 6 and 7, correct. Next. The only DR is router 5. You see, you got only one type 2 LSA. But if you go to another area, if you go to this area and check, there will be two DRs. Because both are Ethernet segments. Look at this. I want to show you that. R5 
show IP OSP of database, see only area 0. In area 0, how many DRs you have? Router 3 is a DR, router 4 is a DR. This is area 0. On the same router, you also have a area 2 and there is only one DR in area 2. Even though the number of routers are 3, 3 in both the areas, but the number of DR is less in area 2 because we got a serial wire there. So, don't try troubleshooting. Uh, I got two routers, sorry, two, two wires. Why I'm not seeing another DR? Why I'm not, this OSPF is not properly designed. Uh, my router is correct, my understanding. <laughs> You will not see another DR because it's a serial wire there. Don't try troubleshooting for another DR. Sorry, another link state advertisement. Try to don't don't come. Next, let's go to router six. If you check router six database, show. IPOSP database. You can see here the router LSA, those three routers 5, 6, and 7 in area 2. Network LSA only 5. Summary LSA. What is summary LSA? The LSA that is originated from the border router. See, all are 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. Who is 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, It's router 5. Who is router 5? Router 5 is an ABR. I told you the summary LSA originates from summary LSA originates from ABR. What do they carry? They carry the other network info. See, other area, these, these networks are where? See the picture until. Hmm? You can see like this. Where is 11111? Is, is that 11111 in area 2? No. 11111 is in area 1. Where is this 5.5.5.5? It's in area 0. That's how I have configured. I did not configure in area 2. Where is this 10.45? It is in area 0. Where is this 10.123? It's in area 1. All other area networks are given to us as type 3. Now, you can also see this in routing table. Let's go to the routing table. Show IP OSPF. Show IP route OSPF. When you say show IP route, it will show all the routes including the connected networks. I just want to filter and show you only the OSPF learned routes. So I want to say only OSPF. Now what do you see? We see IA. IA means what? Inter area. Inter area means what? Coming from other area. Coming from other area how? Using type 3. You see? Type 3. All the type 3 LSAs will be shown as IA. All these networks in the routing table will be shown as IA. Hey, don't make fun of me. Look at this. I'm in router 6 now. You can see on the top router 6. Now, these are all local to the area, which means I should see 777 as 0. Oh, yes, same area routes. Same area routes will be O. Same area routes will be O. Other area routes will be O, I, A. So, we are seeing here type three routes separately in the routing table 
with a marking of IA in their area. Is there any question so far? So we, we saw up to type 3 and let's see. Let's see 4 and 5 now. Nowhere on any of this router you can see 4 and 5 in this topology it's not possible to see 4 and 5 because we don't have ASBR. What is ASBR? The router where we do redistribution from some other routing protocol. What is redistribution? Taking the routes from some other protocol and giving into OSPF is an example for redistribution. Translation. If someone is saying translation, it doesn't mean only from uh, Kannada to Telugu. It may be from French to Spanish, from German to hmm, Tamil, from Greek to Latin. It can be from any language to any language. Redistribution, the word redistribution is also a common term. It, it may be from OSPF to another OSPF. It may be from one EIGRP to OSPF. If you see in India, people speak Tamil, but sometimes you need a translator for the Tamil. Yama, ina kundi What do you understand? Not every Tamil people will understand this Tamil. That's another translation for the Tamil. The Tamil is translated by another Tamil. Likewise, an OSPF can be translated from one OSPF to redistributed from one OSPF to another OSPF. So we don't have a redistribution route now. We don't have any other protocol or any other source. Let us bring another source of network. I'm going to introduce another router to this topology. And I connect it to router 7. Now this router 8 this router 8 is considered as an external autonomous system. So to make it more realistic, I'm going to change the symbol. Symbol. Oh, here it is. Change symbol. So, I'm just going to create three Lubeck interface and put these IP addresses just to simulate some networks from outside. And between this router 7 and uh, 8, I'm going to have a network, let's say, 78. Where are you? Here. I'll put 24. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run RIP. It, 
can be any protocol you can also run EIGRP or you can run another OSPF I do not want to confuse you with another OSPF so let us make it simple I'll put EIGRP an autonomous system let's say 100 so what is going to be the protocol EIGRP let me change the color of this The blue color is EIGRP. So EIGRP will be running also on router 7. Let me start this router. This actually it's a router, it's not real cloud. Just made it as a cloud for our understanding. Let me finish configuring on router 8 first. The new cloud. IP address is going to be 78.0.0.8 Now, I said we will run EIGRP, no? So, router EIGRP 100, the networks are 78 E dot e dot e dot e dot eight and zero 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 eighty eight one eighty eight done. So we are running EIGRP on all those three loopbacks and that one physical interface. Like your EIGRP. Oh, there is one loopback missing. What is that? Loopback 1 is there. Loopback 2 is missing. Show IP interface brief. Did I configure loopback? I have configured, but show run. Maybe I did not put in EIGRP. Is there no? Okay, 188 is not class A. So, either I need to remove this and put 188, 188. La 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 la. Bum, bum, bum. Let me remove this. And I can I can use the same with wildcard mask. What does this say? First octet only should be this. The remaining octet can be anything. This will make EIGRP to run. Show IP EIGRP interface. You see? So no need to worry about the class if you will use a wildcard mask. Alright, what is next? 
Now Route is running EIGRP. We need to go and run EIGRP on Router 7. Router 7. Show IP protocol as of now we got only OSPF. So if you type show IP root, you will not see any routes of 8888 8, 8, 8, 8, or 88 or 188. You don't see any route. Let us first of all configure this G00 interface. then put that in the EIGRP router EIGRP 100 only one network 78 I'm not putting any OSPF networks in EIGRP okay now I got a neighbor with routers router 8 router 7 has found a neighbor with router 8 focus from now very closely look at this show IP protocol protocol EIGRP says I'm running only this network. If you check the routing table, show IP route. EIGRP learned routes. These are the routes that you are learning from EIGRP router 8. But these routes are not redistributed. As a result, if I will ping from Even from router 6, it won't ping. It won't ping because router 6 don't know about those external routes. Why? Because router 6 don't run EIGRP. So, EIGRP routes are external. Unless you redistribute, this ping won't happen. If R6 is not pinging, well, R1 can ping. No way. Now, before I go into all those things, I want to show you one more time the database. Show IP OSP of database. You see. Do you see any type 4? This is somebody let's say, which is bringing other area networks. Means this is type 3. There is no type 4. Why? Because I have not done redistribution. After redistributing, I'll bring you back here. Not only on router 6, I also want to show you in router 1. You don't see type 4. Type 1. Huh? Why is this always showing? I think I made some mistake. Show IP OSPF interface brief. No. Why it's showing area 0 always? Here IP hmm. here is zero count. So you don't see anything other than type one, type two, type three. We don't see. We don't see four and five. We don't see, but. When I redistribute from EIGRP to OSPF on router 7, like this, router 7 knows both. So this is the only place where you can do redistribution. The moment you finish your redistribution, this router will become ASBR. ASBR. Is it ASBR now? No. No. Unless you redistribute. It cannot be an ASPR. It cannot be an autonomous system border router. You need to redistribute and become an autonomous system border router. Nothing is going from that EIGRP to OSPF. Then how can this become a border? Now let us go and say router OSPF 1 redistribute 
EIGRP 100. What is this 100? It is EIGRP is autonomous system number. You are saying OSPF. You take all the routes that is there in EIGRP 100 process. You take all the routes. Even including the subnets you take. Including the subnets you may take. If you don't mention the word subnet, only the classful networks, if any, will be redistributed. So don't forget the word subnet. We don't have much classful networks in today's world of network. We mostly have only subnetted network. We always have, I can say. We have only subnetted network. So use the word subnet without fail whenever you redistribute some protocol routes into OSPF. Okay, fine. This one command is more than enough for OSPF to know about all those EIGRP routes. But EIGRP router don't know anything about OSPF. So what we do is we go to EIGRP now. Router EIGRP 100. Read this. We are saying EIGRP, please take all that is given by OSPF process ID 1. With a metric. Just like that you can type 5. 5K values. In OSPF, you have not said you have not said any metric. If you don't say any metric, the default metric will be 20. 20. All right. Let's go now to R6. R6. Earlier, this is what the condition. How many tables you see? Three tables. One is router, LSA. Second one is the network, LSA. Third one is the summary, LSA. Now let's check now. I see router, LSA, type 1. Network, LSA, type 2. Summary, LSA, type 3. And I see type 5. Type 5 is carrying what? All those EIGRP routes. All those external routes are coming as type 5. Why type 4 is not seen? Why type 4 is not seen? Because type 4 will be originating only from router 5 onwards. Type 4 will say 7.7.7.7 is the router ID. So you will not see type 4 in router 6, but you will see it on router 1. Let's go and check in router 1. You will see on any router between router 1 to 4. Go to router 4 and check. You see, type 1 LSA, type 2 LSA, type 3 LSA, type 4 LSA. See, autonomous system border summary. This is different from this one. But both originates from EBR. Who is giving you this? 777 is the router ID of? 777 is the router ID of ASBR. Who is advertising that? Your ABR. That's why you see advertised router is 33333. Yeah? Right. So we learned type 4 and type 5 also now. Ping and C. Ping 88. 88, 88, 88. You can ping. I can ping with the source 11111. What does this mean? This means that router 8 knows to reach back 11111. So router 8 is running EIGRP. Router 8 knows about all the OSPF routes. And router OSPF also knows about EIGRP routes. Now how it will look like in the routing table? In the routing table it will be shown as E2. Focus, show IP route, OSPF. See, all those routes coming from EIGRP will be shown as E. This E is not because of EIGRP. This E is because of redistribution external. E means external. 
So we see 8888 8, 8, 8, 8 as E, we see 188, 188 as E, 88 as E, 78 as E, all these are 78, 188, 88, 88, 88, 88, 88, 88, 88, 88, 88, 88, Type 4 will not be seen in router 6 because router 6 is within that area. Type 4 originates only from the ABR which is R5. If you go and check it in R4, you will see router 5's address as the advertised router of type 4. Show IP OSP of database. Um, type 4 advertised router is ABR of that area. So five, th five types of LSA carry five different information. When you have five different information with five different names like type 1, LSA type 2, LSA type 3 and 4 and 5, it will be easy for you to filter anything that you like. I, if I want to filter the external routes, all that I need to do is filter type 5. All the external routes will be removed. If you want to remove all those other area routes, I need to filter type 3 LSA. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's why we have these many types. Now I want to take you to the next uh, level. When we were learning, we saw O means OSPF routes from the same area. OIA means the OSPF routes from next area, other areas. Mm -hmm. So, this O means it's coming from same area. This network is in same area where router 4 is. IM means it is coming from another area. E2 means coming from different autonomous system. E2 Routing table says it is E2. How it knows? Because type 5 LSA was giving this. That's why it is saying E2. IA, it is because type 3 LSA gave this. That's why it is saying IA. O, because it is given by type 1 and 2. That's why it is O. So, because of the types, different type, even OSPF routing table will put IA, E2, O and so on. If you see the network A dot A dot A dot A, what is the metric you see? For A dot A dot A dot A or 188, what is the metric you see on all E2 networks? It is 20. That 110 is the administrative distance. For administra for OSPF, administrative distance is 110. Every one of us know it. What is the 20? 20 is the metric. Did I give any metric for those EIGRP routes? No. When you don't provide metric, I was telling you, while redistributing, I was telling you, if you don't provide metric, while redistributing under OSPF, it will take metric as 20. Now I'm going to change that. I'm going to 
going to change. I'll say metric as um, 777. Now 20 will be replaced by 777. You want to see that? Look at this. This is 20, no? But now it's 777. So I'm I'm giving 777 as a metric for all the networks coming from EIGRP. If you don't give 777, it is going to be 20 by default. Now, please focus now. That 777 is same. In router 4, when I check, it is 777. In router 1, also 777. But, won't there be any metric between router 1 to router 4? Definitely there is some metric. See, there are link involved. There are wires involved. There is a delay. There is a bandwidth. But, the metric remains same on every router. It is because of the metric type E2. When there is a, when there is a metric type E2, a path cost, the path cost won't be added. The path cost will remain the same what you give on the redistribution router. I gave 777. So here also it is 77 because it's E2. But if you will change the metric type as E1, what will happen, you know, when you change the metric type as E1, the path cost will get added. So these routes, when I redistributed, I said 777. That 777 is everywhere same. Seven 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 is everywhere the same because it is E two by default. But if I say E one, if I will say metric type E one, E two is default. If I say E one, what will happen to the seven seven seven? The metric of this link will be added and shown here. Let's say the metric is one here. Assume. Actually, it will be like 64 something. Hmm? I'm poor in calculation now. So, I'll say 777. Let's say this is 1. And here it will be 778. If it is 1 here, then it will be 789. 80. 81. 82. Hmm? So, the path cost is going to be added if you make it as E2. Let me show you. But E2 is not, E2, E2 is, sorry, when, when you change to E1, path cost will be added. E2 is default. E2, path cost won't be added. You know one thing, it is good not to calculate the path cost. What is the use of calculating the path cost? Whether you calculate or not, to reach 888, it has to go like this only. Then why you unnecessarily calculate? Let it be the default 777. In case if you have more than one ISPs, you got another ISP here, which is also advertising 888. Now you need to configure redistribution with E1 so that for these routers, this is cheaper. For this router, this will be cheaper. So only when we have more than one external autonomous system, you may need to go and change the metric type from E2 to E1. Now let me go and show you how to change the type. Right now, it's E2 everywhere. So no path cost added. 777, whatever I gave is still there. Let me go to router 7 and say metric type 
you see 2 is default I'm saying 1 now you will see on router 1 for 8888 earlier it was 777 but now for 8888 it is 847 it's not 777 it's 847 meaning the path cost is added E2 carries the same metric that we injected while redistributing we injected 777 you can call that injecting metric a seed metric that seed won't grow if it is E2 if it is E1 the seed will germinate radical and plumber will come out it will become a stem and it will give leaves and leaves will give flowers and flowers will give fruits. Fruits will have nut and when nut falls down again it becomes a root. That's not a biology I want to teach. But that's the name given here called seed metric. Seed metric is the metric that we give for those external routes during the redistribution time. 777 is a seed metric. That seed metric gets incremented when you say E1. Incremented with what? Incremented with the cost in the path. Kindly ask me question if you have now. We have seen E1, E2, we have seen IA, we have seen O. We have seen uh, five metric types. Any question? Sir, can you show what is inside each LSA? You want to see inside every LSA? No problem, we can see. We'll sniff between type, uh, sorry, router 5 and router 6. I'm going to sniff between dot 5 and dot 6. And I would like to take, okay, OSPF profile, it's already OSPF profile. And I want to show you only the LSA, so I will click only the updates. I don't see any updates because they have already conveyed, they have already shared the update, I just started. So what I can do is I can refresh the router. Okay, I'm going to go and shut down this interface and unshut so that everything from the beginning, R6 will share to R5. R6, where are you? Interface G00, shut down. Yep. Let's say no shut down now. Okay. I'm expecting a lot of updates coming now. Yeah, I can see DBD coming from router 6 to 5. That's what we want. From router 6 to 5, you see there is a... I, I'm clicking only DBD. Only DBD, message type 2. Database description, you see. Only DBD. And the uh, OSPF header says it's a DBD packet. DBD has got base minus as I said you need to master it's, it's actually you no know, the master is sharing the update so it says I'm the master I'm sharing so, uh, that, that's not continue that's not going to continue the role is going to break 
TLV type length value for carrying some miscellaneous thing. Let us go and check updates packets. These are all update packets. Going from 6, this is message type 4, it's not LSA type 4. Here it is, LS update packet, LSA type 1. I'm sorry, this is number of LSA, only one LSA. Okay, it's also type 1 LSA, router LSA. So it carries the information like this. My link state ID is 6.6.6.6. My advertising router ID is also 6.6.6.6. Check some value and sequence number. And uh, it also shares information like the mask of 6.6.6.6. The mask on 10.56 is for slash 24, 10.67. All these informations are, this is a point-to-point -point network, you remember 777 is a point-to-point -point network, we have a serial wire. All this with myth metric. So again type 1 LSA. This also contains one. Okay, five to six. I do not want to see six to seven. Let's focus only on one. There are three LSAs here. This is not the one. This is just a link type. There are four links available. So the router LSA. Well, the network LSA will come only from the designated router. So it says I'm a transit, I'm just forwarding it for you. So on. Now this is advertising this two network. Who is advertising? Router 5 is advertising this two. This is LSA type 2. Yes, Router 5 is the DR. So it's sending type 2 LSA, network LSA. Now um, type 4 you cannot see because we are sniffing between router 5 and uh, 6 but type 5 you should be seeing going from router uh, 5 will originate from router 7 itself but it can be it will be forwarded by router 6 we will be able to see from router 6 I want to see back it coming from router 6 with 88 Network. Let's see, is there anything coming from 6 with uh, type? Let's say type 1. Type 1, let's say. Network LSA type 2, type 3 summary LSA. This will have a lot of information. LSA type 3 will have a lot of info. Again, type 3. A lot of info of type 3 because we got many networks coming from other area. I'm interested in showing type 5 to you. Type 5. Let me make one uh, filter. Let 
I don't think I can do like this. Because the length is involved, I should not have length. So it's advertising, you know, uh, link ID 8888, likewise 8888, 78, 88, and then 188. This is type 5 LSC. Right, so that's it. Only when you do, you will be more. Uh, Satisfied, so you have to do these things. What I'm showing. Fine. Um, any other question? All right. Next, that what we are going to see is the summarization. You know, the presentation is not in that order. Summarization mostly it will be in the next chapter, but this topology is a very best one for doing summarization. OSPF route summarization. Summarization is always good. We all know that. It will save your bandwidth. Summarization is good. Instead of sending details, subnets, when you do summarize and send the summarized update, when a specific network goes down, LSS won't be flooded. So summarization reduces the amount of LSS that you flood. Because I'm using the word flood, don't misunderstand like I'm, 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 I mean, I'm not meaning broadcast. It means send to everyone, every OSPF route using the multi -guest address. So flooding happens whenever there is a change in the link. But if you have a summarized LSA, because the summary is pointing towards multiple subnets, when one subnet goes down, there won't be LSA flooded to other area. So type 3, when you have a summarized type 3 LSA, the other area routers will have less buffer consumed in the database as well as in the routing table, as well as the less process utilized for processing because it's not too many LSAs. The routing table space is going to be small. The processing time taken to find out the external interface and route the packet will be less. So, summarization is good always. Summarization is good. But, if you notice OSPF, We also learn route from outside. ABR is the place where we receive the external routes into OSPF. So if you want to do summarization for external network, you need to do summarization on ASBR, not on any other router. If you want to, if you want to summarize the networks that are coming from external, if you want to summarize the networks that are coming from outside this OSPF, which are coming inside because of redistribution, if I want to summarize those redistributed subnets, we have to do that on ASBR autonomous system border router. In our case it is router 7. 
So what I'm going to take is I'm going to take some subnets like 18.1.1.01 slash 24 18.1.2.1 slash 24 Yeah. I'm going to have all these networks now configured on R8 and I'll advertise this using EIGRP and you will be seeing type file let's say becoming bigger right now on router 6 if you go and check show IP OSPF database uh, it's just four line of information Four networks but when I add another eight it becomes 12 networks 12 line of information so more buffer is going to be consumed you see show IP route summary if you see here OSPF internal is taking this much All the rest are external, the memory consumed. So we can reduce this, see right now external is only um, E1 is 4. Right now there are only 4 routes, these are the 4 routes. So when I add these networks, Definitely, it's going to increase this number. Let's see that first, and then we'll do summarization. Focus. I'm on router eight. Interface loopback one, two, and one, and zero, one, and two. I have already used. So I'm going to start from uh, loopback um, eleven onwards. IP address 18.1.1.1 Interface to back 12 IP address is 18.1.2.1 Review back 13 3 Review back 14 Four, number fifteen, five, number sixteen, six, number seventeen, seven, number eighteen, eight. Now let us advertise this on the EIGRP router, EIGRP 100, network 18. Going back to router 6 where we were checking earlier the size earlier, the external networks were only 4 but now it's 12. Earlier it was 16,000 plus, now it is 18,000 plus, so definitely it consumes more space. When you do summarization, you can reduce this. Instead of learning for 12 routes, if I would have learned 15, means earlier 4, now on behalf of all these 8, if I have just only one summary route, then this would have become 5 instead of 12, and the total would have been gone 
much lesser. Hmm? So, summer recession is always good. Let us check the database also. You see, earlier we were having only four, but now we are we are learning additionally eight more networks. Even the database space is going to be consumed more. La, 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 la. These are all, don't waste time in it, it's going pages after pages. Uh, but simple, everyone knows. When, it, when there is five line, the space, and when there is 15 line, the space is going to be definitely more. Let's see how to minimize this by summarizing. Focus. We are going to summarize the network coming from outside. Outside, do they know anything about area? No. EHRP don't know anything about area. So, the command will not have anything related to area. The command will be like this. Summar summary address. How, what do you want to summarize? I want to summarize 18.10. This is how I would like to summarize. Yes, it's going on. Welcome. So, I've said, if you find anything starting from 18.1, it may be 18.1.1.1 slash 24, 2.1 slash 3.4, 6.4, 8.1 slash 1, whatever. Just summarize like this. This is the command. You are summarizing the external networks that is trying to get inside OSPF. I'm doing this under the OSPF, but I'm saying you should round yourself to this slash 20, not 24, slash 16. Originally, it is, from, it is having slash 24. Now, let's go back to router 6. Earlier, you were having these many routes. Now, I'm expecting all these to be summarized as just one line. You want to see that? See here. One line summarized. And I want to check the routing table. Earlier it was 12, now it is 5. Earlier it was 18,000 plus, now it is 17,000 plus. And let's check the routing table. The routing table has got just only one 18 network. If I remove the summarization, see what happens. I remove the summarization. I removed. Now on the same router 6, you see how many 18 has come. Routing table has grown big. Let's put the command. Now check. Reduced. So summarization is definitely creating a big good positive impact. Now we learn how to summarize those routes coming from outside the autonomous system. Next what we are going to learn is how to summarize those routes coming from some area. For that, I'll take some networks in router 1. So these are the networks that we are going to have on router 1, newly added, interface loopback 11,
eight. So we got eight newly added networks. Show IP interface brief, you can see them. I'm going to advertise this in OSPF, router OSPF 1, network 11. Let us verify now. Show IP OSPF interface brief. Yeah, all these are included. Going back to router 6. I'm going to back to router 6. Router 6. And I'll see. It's 20,000 plus. Earlier it was 17,000 plus. Because the internal area inter area has grown bigger earlier it was not 16 earlier it was only 8 now additionally 8 got added so when you add this also will get added got added yeah so how are you going to reduce this show IP route you can see here this 11 network IA inter area even no, even even the database if you see show IP OSP of database you will see more type 3 now this type 3 all got added now what is type 3 coming from other area I am going to reduce this to reduce this you cannot do it on router 1 even though this network belongs to router 1 even though these subnets belong to router 1 you can't do this here. You should do only on R3. That is the summarization point. So I'll go to router 3 and say router 3, router 3. Router OSPF 1. Please focus. When I was doing summarization on ABR, I was using the command summary address. You know why? Because the networks that I'm trying to summarize, they don't belong to any area. They belong to outside world. But the network that you are trying to, uh, trying to summarize now, the networks that you are trying to summarize now belong to OSPF, belong to this area 1. So, command won't be same it will be area 1 why I'm saying area 1 because those networks are from area 1 range 11.1.00255.255.0 this is how you have to summarize we call this as ABR summarization ABR the earlier one which we did on router 7 is called ASBR summarization. ASBR summarization command is different from ABR summarization. ABR summarization you need to mention the area of those networks that you are trying to summarize. Whereas ASBR summarization because you don't have any area you cannot use the same command you need to use this command called summary address this is ABR summarization and this is ASB sorry this is ABR summarization and that this is ASBR ASBR summarization on ASBR router ABR summarization is on ABR router you cannot do summarization for internal networks on the internal router. 11, 11, 11, 11 networks. These 11 networks are internal or are external? Of course it is internal. It is OSPF. So you cannot do internal networks on internal router. You should do only on the ABR of that area. Which means I cannot do it on router 1 only possible is on router 3. So the command is 
area 1 reach don't put zero zero don't say i'm sending to area 0 so i need to put zero no you may be sending the summary route to area 0 but whose network this belong to this belong to area 1 you need to say the networks that you see in area 1 if it begins with 11.1 you need to summarize 11.1.00 slash 16 the original summarize the original subnet may be slash 24 or slash 30 that doesn't matter you just summarize like this and send only this that's very fine going back to the same router 6 See, type 3 LSA has reduced and size. Earlier it was 20,000 plus, now it is 19,000. You see, earlier it was 16, now it is 9. Earlier it was 16 and 20,000. But now it is 9, the intra Check the routing table show IP route. You will have only one. But you can ping all of them. Ping 11.1.5.1. It will ping. Likewise, you can also ping this uh, summarized uh, E1. Where it is? Summarized E1. This one. Even though you got only the summary one, but you can still ping, you can ping with that same summary route, the detail network. And you know, the summarization definitely saves buffer, bytes in database, in routing table, as well as it reduces the number of advertisement that will be sent you see, you are sending only the summary, not the detailed subnets. On behalf of each subnet, we are sending only one update. Summarization is good. Question, please. Let's go through this. Configuring OSPF, OSPF route summarization. See, why do we need to do summarization? Minimize, minimize the number of routing table entries. And localize the impact of topology change. Localize the impact of topology. Reduce the type 3 LSA. When you do summarization for area 1, what we are reducing? Type 3 LSA. When you do summarization on uh, the ASBR, we are reducing type 5 LSA. That reduces the CPU utilization also, not only the bandwidth and space. So, if you want to summarize like this, this is also possible. I'm going to show you now. What it is, you can. Uh, One minute. Now, let's go back to the same example which we are doing. Look at this. We got 18.1.1.1 to 18.1.8.1. Let us assume for some reason I do not want I do not want this one to be summarized. I want this one to be same like this, slash 24. I just want to summarize only up to here. We can do that. Let's see. Before I do that, I want to go and show you. Show IP route 18.1.8.1. I don't, I have only the summary route for that called slash 16. I don't have a detailed route like this, nor like this. 
I just got slash 16. I don't have 24. But after I do summarization like this, a slight change, you see. I remove this. I remove this. And then I put here 255 minus 7. Why I'm saying minus 7? I want only the seven, first seven to be summarized in the third octet. In the third octet, one to seven need to be summarized. So two five five minus seven is two forty eight. Two forty eight dot zero. Boom. Now, if you go back and check. You got a specific root. Earlier it was not like that. Earlier we were using summarized root to reach this network, but you got a you got a specific root now. Check the routing table. Show IP route. You got summarization only up to seven network slash twenty one. This is the 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 the, the real subnet slash twenty four without summarization. We do summarization only up to first seven networks that is beginning with 18.1. Like this. You can also try here. You see, here I want to summarize only up to first four. And I want a detailed route for this. Right now, I, I want to check it on the same router, go to router 1. Right now, on router 1 for 11 network, you got only one network, only one summarized route. Show IP route 11.1.5.1, it is using only the summary route. But if I go to ABR and slightly change the mask, Area 1 range 11.1.0.0. I want to summarize only first 4. So 255 minus 4. 255 minus 4. 251. There is no 251. There is 252. 252. I'm sorry, not here. 255. Third update. 252.0. The reason why I put 252 is uh, when you count, you need to start from the 0. 11.1.0. This will be 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's how it goes. So now if you go back and check in router 6, router 6. Earlier it was like this, but now. It's slash 32. You got a detailed route for 5. Dot. Early it was using a summarized route. Let's check the routing table. You see? From, from 0 to 3 it is summarized. I said it will count from 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So from 4 onwards it is not summarizing. Oops. So summarization need not to be like 24, 16, it can be 21, 18. Hmm. What we got is, we got 22. And uh, for 18 what we got is, I think 27, 21. You, know, you can have any length subnet mask. Depending on your, what you want to allow to be advertised in detail and what you want to be advertised as a summarized one. Mm -hmm. So, going back to the presentation. We got this, right? What does this example say? It says, 
starting from 8 255 minus 7 they have done that's why you got 248 7 so from 8 to next 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 sorry from 8 you need leave next 7 up to 15 it is summarizing here 3 leave this one from 16 no leave the 16 17 18 and 3 summarized this is more granular summarization So this one I already did for you. Inter area, this is how we summarize. I use the command area one range command. You can use the summary address command for ASBR summarization. This is not optional, advertise, not advertise. See an example here. Take a minute time, go through it by your own. Next. Um, and this is how we did the ASBR summarization. I hope you remember that. We went to ABR, ASBR itself and we put this command. Right. And about the default route and all, we'll speak later. So the summarization is over for us. But what we will do is we'll go back to our LSA type. But before going but we, are, we have to cover another topic called stub. Only then I can go back to is LSE type where I can teach you LSE type 7. So in our next class in this weekend batch, please remind me we need to start stub, OSPF stub. We stop here.